And this is basically like, I think it's definitely worth a lecture of, of its own because this was, you know, among other things, uh, this was in fact what Einstein received his Nobel Prize for. Um, you know, trivia, he did not receive his Nobel for the, rel the theory of relativity, uh, neither special nor general. Um, because basically it was back, you know, back, back at that time, which has fortunately now changed. Um, the, the, uh, Nobel Prize for Physics was only allowed to be given for what they consider traditional physics, which was things, for example, like, you know, the, the Maxwell's theory of light uh, that came before the Nobel stuff, um, or experimental physics like Marie Curie and Rutherford. But they didn't consider some, some dude sitting in his basement thinking about the universe like Nobel worthy. Um, obviously, that has now changed, uh, but he was never awarded the Nobel for his contributions for relativity. Uh, I'm going to let my dog in here. <laughs> So uh, what we're going to do is just go through the the um, the experimental setup, which, by the way, Einstein was not an experimentalist. He he did, and I think we've already talked about it a bit, but what's called the famous Gedanken experiments or the thought experiments. And so everything we're going to talk about here has, in fact, been done in some sort in a lab. But it was essentially Einstein's genius kind of like put everything together and put these disparate results into a nice shaped box to be able to interpret it properly. And the, the ultimate interpretation is just like the most bizarre thing ever, but at least he made sense of a puzzle and turns out that all the rest of quantum theory, you know, the fact that the answer was weird wasn't Einstein's fault um, because that's kind of a fundamental tenet of what we see as quantum physics. That if it's not weird, it's probably not right. So um, let's go ahead and talk about the experimental setup first of all.